In this video, I'll go over the component mask node. I'm gonna explain what it is, what it's used for, and how we can use it in our materials. So let's do it. I've created a master material with all the functions necessary for your projects. You can download it for free on my website. Link in the description below. Right click in the material graph and search for component mask. It's one of those nodes that the title doesn't match its name. So wherever you see the mask node, it's actually component mask. It has one input and one output. On the left, we can enable any of these. This is the red channel, this is the green channel, and these are the blue and the alpha channels. Component mask enables us to select a specific channels from the input to pass through to the output. A channel? What is it you might ask? As you might know, regular color is in fact made of three separate grayscale values. We show these values with the red, green, and blue colors. The same is true for regular color images. They consist of three separate grayscale images. They are displayed on top of each other to give our eyes the illusion of color. The fourth channel is called the alpha channel. It enables us to achieve localized texture invisibility. The black parts have a value of 0 and are fully invisible. The white parts have a value of 1 and are fully visible. You can see the localized invisibility. Any value between 0 and 1 will be a gray color. Gray means it is see-through, neither fully visible nor fully invisible. We can see it better if I add a constant 4 vector to the material. As you can see, we have one alpha input here in the details tab and one alpha output on the node. We also have this little square here. Right now alpha is set to 0, so we won't see the color here no matter what the RGB values are. If I set the alpha value to 1, we'll see the color. Now if I slowly decrease the alpha value, we'll see that the color will slowly go away. That was a short explanation of channels for those who weren't familiar with the concept. Now let's go back to the node. Component mask allows us to take in up to 4 inputs and output up to 4 outputs. But we get to choose which ones we want. We can check any of the channels we want from the left side in the details tab. By default, the red and the green channels are checked and the title of the node shows it. Now if I enable or disable any of the channels, we can see it on the node. Trying to pass a channel through that does not exist in the input will cause an error. For example, let's add this texture here. Connect them like this. We fit the RGB into the component mask, so there won't be a problem as long as I only enable the RGB channels here. If I enable the alpha channel, we'll get an error because there is no alpha channel. The error will go away if I use the RGBA output because now we're feeding the alpha channel to the component mask. We'll encounter the same problem if we connect a constant 2 vector. It only has a red and a green channel. So if I enable the blue or the alpha channels, we'll get an error. The only exception for this is when we use a simple constant. In that case, the single value is passed through to each channel. Let's connect this texture again. If I enable only the R channel and open the preview on the node here, the texture appears to be red. Even if I enable the green and blue channels, it's still red. But as you can see, if I connect the component mask to the base color, the result is still in gray scale. It may be confusing. The reason it shows red here is that the single channel is always displayed in the first slot. And the first slot is always red, as in RGB. The final result is correct. It's just shown differently here. Now let's see how we can use this node in our materials. But before getting to that, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also join our community on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. The links are in the description below.
let's add a constant 3 vector. Connect it to the component mask. I'll set it to 0 0.4, 0 0.1 and 0 0.8. Connect it to the base color. When the R channel is enabled, it's like a constant value of 0 0.4 is connected to the base color. The same is true for the green and the blue channels. This is the simplest example. I use it in my landscape material to mask the R channel for the specular. I could use the R channel straight from the texture, but then I'd have to copy all these nodes. Whereas now, I mask the R channel after all these nodes have affected the texture. You can download the landscape material from my website. The link is in the description. Here I masked the B channel of the vertex normal node. I want the B channel because it is the height or the Z value in world space. In this case, RGB is the same as XYZ in 3D space. Red is X, green is Y, and blue is Z. So keep that in mind. Epic Games has also used this node to create some functions. Right click and search for breakout. Three results will pop up. Let's add all of them. These are in-engine material functions. Double click on them to open them. Component mask is used in all of them. It is used to mask the different channels and fit them to their respective outputs. The functions do as their name suggests. They break flow 2, 3 and 4 into their components. The RGBA channels. So that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. So you won't miss the new tutorials I'm planning to put here. Also join our community on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Now, with all of that being said, I'll see you in the next one.